How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Today I've got another excerpt from the Chase the Craft podcast with Daniel Whittington. Today we're talking about three main things that you need to do before you even consider opening a distillery. From, from the idea of starting to think about should I open a distillery through to opening up, you right. know, and, and in your mind what the key points are between A and B. Uh, number one, start to get to know the people who are already in the industry in your area. Before you even do anything else, start going to their distillery tasting rooms when they open, go to their yeah. bars, buy things, uh, ask them questions, see if you can talk with them, volunteer to help bottling days and, you know, offer support. Um, I would start with that um, because these are the people who are going to help you survive once you get rolling. Because as you go along, there are countless hundreds to thousands of questions you're going to have that mm. you can't find in a book and you don't read anywhere and there's no graduate degree program to teach you. And yeah. the only, and you go on the internet and all you're finding is home forums where most of the information is bullshit, as you know. <laughs> and, uh, and if instead you can go down the street and be like, hey, I can't keep my... Uh, fermentation temperature under control and I don't know where it's going wrong because this thing I bought they told me was supposed to do X but and they're like oh yeah but what that company won't tell you is that in this climate you're gonna have to do Y and Z first and then it will work you know and then I'll you know you could have that in a five-minute conversation if they know you right and they trust you yeah and you would be shocked my, my experience is Almost everybody in the entire industry that we've encountered it works aggressively to help each other. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are countless stories of people like Ty Fels from Andalusia stepping in on other craft stories in Texas, helping them solve huge problems. Uh, and then just going and charging nothing and then going back to the story and making whiskey. I mean, the whole whiskey industry owes Ty Phelps <laughs> in, in Texas. I mean, I'm pretty certain he's had a hand in helping almost every active whiskey distillery in the state. <laughs> right yeah well at, at yeah. some level right he's just a giver and yeah. uh extremely knowledgeable um and came from so, a really cool background on the yeah especially brewer. on the brewing and yeah, fermentation yeah. side of things right? exactly so, and he's a scientist man he's a he's super hardcore about shit um but i would say so get to know people get to become a regular face invest in other people's livelihoods you know spend some time and while you're doing that get a lawyer First, very first thing, get the best liquor lottery that you can find in your area. And you can even talk to the stories about that. Like, hey, because there's no conflict of interest with another company having a lawyer of the same as yours unless, you know, you guys go to court against each other. <laughs> <laughs> refer Which back to speak uh, one. Yeah, do yeah refer back to not being a dick. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so get a lawyer because a good lawyer is going to solve so many things that you never thought you needed to account for. And it can't be a generic lawyer. It needs to be a, a liquor industry lawyer, right? That uh, We got one. Her name is Kimberly Frost. Um, she's based in Austin. Her firm is probably, her firm handles, I would assume, from the people I know working with her, probably the majority of the distilleries in Texas. Her firm, the guy who founded the firm, was instrumental in writing a lot of the liquor laws back in the day. Right. Continue. So they know people yeah. <laughs> and they know what they're doing. We hired her and we uh, we are like, OK, we need to apply for the license federally and state. And she's like, OK, here's what you're going to do. I need you to fill out these pieces of information. We'll build the forms. We're going to submit them. Uh, and then as soon as it submits the on that day, wait one hour, I'll email you when I email you call these four phone numbers and say this script that I'm going to email to you. <laughs> I'm like, yes, ma'am. So yeah. We, yeah. So we <laughs> sent it all. We did. We made the call. We had our federal license approval in two weeks. That's, I don't know the American system, but that's unheard of. I'm sure. No, no, that's insane. Yeah. Uh, and then we had the state one only a little bit after that. And that got delayed because our neighborhood people decided they wanted to fight it. Uh, but not all of them. One guy who happened to be the head of the HOA 
<laughs> and he managed to convince four other people in a neighborhood of like 600 that it wasn't a good idea. And that was enough to hold us up for six weeks. Uh, but she was instrumental in all of that, right? So everywhere we've turned and we've almost gone, hey, we want to do this. She's like, hey, 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 no, don't do that. You want to say this and it'll be fine. Do this and call these people. It'll all be fine. You'll get this, this, and this. You don't need to worry about this. They'll tell you you do. You don't need to. Here's why. And man, I don't know what we would have done without her. So it's just, it's one of those things where you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. until you figure out you're in the quagmire, right? And having yeah. someone that can just hold you by the hand and walk you through that stuff. And that's true even if you've worked at the distillery before, because there are questions that get asked that you've never had to think of when you're starting it versus just working at one. Well, that's uh, the thing, right? Even even if you've personally started it, you think mm -hmm. think back to something you create. Someone was asking me for advice on how to set up a YouTube channel. Oh, Jesus. I, and I was like, I Where don't do know, start? dude. I've done that once and that was like four years ago. You know, yeah. if you talk about the day-to-day -day running of it, that's a different thing. I can help you out yeah. there. Uh, yeah, so, and if these people are dealing with that day in, day out, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's crazy. Um, what about from a, almost a proof of concept point of view? You're gonna, you're gonna get to the point of no return with these things eventually where you, you kind of have to shit or get off the pot. You know, you gotta, you gotta commit. What sort of things would you suggest people look for to see if there is actually a viable business here? You know, are, are you would you be focused more on the target market and the people that you can reach? Would you be focused more on the numbers, on on you know, cost versus potential sales and all that sort of stuff? I am, you man, take a stab? I am absolutely the wrong person to answer that question because we built our business totally backwards. You did. <laughs> Coming, yes, you built a following in a community. Completely backwards. Yeah, we built a customer base with no product. Yeah. And we grew yeah. it and grew it and grew it and grew it. And then we were like, do you guys want some whiskey? And they're like, yeah. And we're like, okay. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> that's, I mean, so that's what I would do. <laughs> but it's, but a, it's a real thing, right? You don't I'm have saying, to build a community like that through YouTube. There's other ways to no. build a, a client base before you have a product. Mm -hmm. I would say if I was starting one just generically, like if I was like, okay, I've had enough of Austin, I'm gonna move to, I don't know, screw it. I'm gonna move to East. I'm gonna head out to Beaumont and go out into the boonies <laughs> out over by Louisiana. And uh, I'm gonna make whiskey over there. Then what I would probably try to do is not do what all of the kings of Texas whiskey were already doing. It's like, look, Balconis is kicking ass at malt. Andalusia, kicking ass at malt. Uh, Garrison's kicking butt at bourbon. Balconis is making kick-ass bourbon. Still Austin's too. I don't know. I would try to find something, but it's like, I'm going to pick a little niche corner. I'm going to do something slightly different than everybody else is doing it, and then just focus, double down on quality, and then figure out how I'm going to make money while the whiskey ages, and while I start letting people know. And so, basically... If I was starting from scratch, I would try to find a way, not a unique selling proposition, but probably a unique production method, right? right. So, and, or a unique ingredient or yeah, and something would, that makes the product itself stand out. Yeah. And, yeah. and again, at some level, you're still just going to be making whiskey if you're doing I'm assuming you're making whiskey. But um, yeah. And then in the meantime, I would just say keep your overhead as low as you possibly can for as long as you possibly can. Right. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. stay invisible for as long as you can. Cause I mean, honestly, that's what I do. If I, if I had had to build this from scratch, I would have tried really hard to be able to exist for three to four years without anyone really knowing what was happening. And basically just sell through a little tasting. Well, room and... yeah, maybe. And even then I would keep it on the down low and just be like, Everyone's about to show up at some event with some amazing crap and all the industry people on the area would know who I was because I've been working really hard to support them in the meantime. And so I would just build anticipation of like, there's this dude out in Beaumont. He's doing some cool shit, man. Where do you get it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't even know what it's called. Don't know where it is. Yeah. yeah. Or you do something totally opposite. Uh, you know, you find big money and you do like what Rabbit Hole did in Kentucky. Build a huge brand off of sourced whiskey while building your distillery and then eventually catch up to the existing product with the stuff you made. 
So a huge, huge thank you to Daniel for agreeing to record this podcast. I had an absolute blast and I learnt a lot. I hope you did too. If you want to listen to the full podcast, you can do so at chasethecraft.com slash podcast or search for Chase the Craft on any of your favorite podcatchers. Until next time, guys, keep on chasing the craft. See ya.